Hello guys, welcome to another video in the series of coding. We are going to solve the problem which is called four sum two. So you are given four integer arrays. Uh, you have to return the number of tuples such that uh, if you add four values from each of the corresponding arrays, you will get a summation of zero. Let's try to take an example to understand this. Suppose you take minus five from the first array, minus one from the second array, five from the third array, and one from the fourth array. Minus five, minus one, plus five, plus one, and you can see that this is going to sum up to give me zero. So you have to find all such pairs or tuples that are going to uh, give you zero. So what is a brute force approach? So you are just going to take four for loops, right? And the time complexity is going to be O of n power four, and you are going to find. For example, let's say you have a from the first array, b from the second array, c from the third array, d from the fourth array. So you are going to just find a plus b plus c plus d is equal to zero. If this is true, then you can just increment answer. So let's code the brute force approach, and then let's see how we are going to optimize it. Right? Brute force approach is simple. So for int a in nums of one, for int b in nums of two, for int c in nums of three, and for int d in nums of four. Right. So let me take a answer vector. Uh, sorry, answer variable. Answer is equal to zero. And if a plus b plus c plus d is equal to zero, then answer plus plus, and you can just return answer. Okay. So this is O of n power four solution. Let's sum it and see. I am sure it's going to give time limit exceeded because it's a brute force solution. After this, we'll see how to optimize it. Okay. So this is giving time limit exceeded. Now we can optimize it, right? So let's see how to optimize this. So there is a very famous problem two sum, which is uh, the logic is similar to that. Uh, the problem is you have one array, right? And in that array, you have to find all the pairs that sum up to zero. So let's take an example. Suppose you have five, you have minus two, you have zero, you have two, you have five, and so on, right? Suppose this is an array. Now in this array, you have to find all the pairs that sum up to zero. So what you are going to do in this case? You will. Uh, the way to solve that problem is right. Uh, first, you take two for loops, right? That is a brute force approach. That will be O of n square. So take two for loops and check for all the possible pairs, right? For example, uh, check five minus two. It's minus three. Five plus zero. It's five. Five plus two. Uh, it's seven. Uh, five plus five. It's ten. Okay, so it's not giving. Now let's check the next pairs. Minus two plus zero. It's not giving zero. Minus two plus two. It is giving zero. Okay, so this is one of the possible pairs. So you have found a pair. Now this is O of n square because what you are doing, you are just running two for loops and you are uh, taking all the possible pairs that are possible, and from that you are trying to find if you get a pair that is summing up to zero. But how to optimize this? So you can use a data structure like a map to optimize this and get it in O of n time complexity. How? See what you will do when you are iterating, right? So keep on storing in map. So let's iterate. So five is occurring once. Okay. Next minus two. Minus two is occurring once. Next zero. Zero is occurring. Once. Now you see a two, right? While iterating, so you see that you have a two now. You are looking for a minus two. You already have a minus two, so you can check check in the map. You have a minus two, right? So if you can check in the map, uh, you can just check in map in O of one time complexity, right? In an ordered map, you can check in O of one time complexity, and uh, you you have a two. Uh, now you found a two, and you already have a minus two. That means that there is a pair that is going to sum up to give you zero. So you have a two while iterating, and minus two is already there from the map you looked up in over one time complexity. And uh, so while traversing itself, you are able to find how many pairs you have, and in a single traversal you can do that. So it's very similar, right? So to optimize uh, in this problem also, the logic is very similar. So we will store uh, the values of. Uh, Uh, let's say the first array in a map, right? So let me uh, store one. One is occurring once. Four is occurring once. Minus five is occurring once. Now what we will do in just three for loops? So in just three for loops, right? In O of n cube itself, you can do the same thing, right? So you have already stored the values of a, which is the uh, values occurring in the first array, and now running the three for loops. So you will check if B plus C plus D is equal to minus A, right? So you will check if there is a value in the map such that you are able to sum up to zero. Okay. For example, for example, um, there is minus five, right? There is minus five. Okay. And uh, you have to, and uh, you are when you are running the three for loops, right? So you are finding minus one, five, and one, which are summing up to give you five. Now you already have a minus five, which you can look up from the map. 
So you can look up from the map, you have a minus 5. And while running the three for loops, you found a 5. 5 minus 5 is equal to 0. That means you have found one tuple. Okay, let's code this O of n cube solution and let's see if it's still giving time limit exceeded. So in the first for loop, right? So what we'll do, let me also declare a map, unordered map, int, comma, int, m. So in the first for loop, what I'll do, I will just save uh, the values in the map corresponding to the counts. Now I will run these three for loops and I will check now, I will check if in the map, right, if in the map I am able to find minus B plus C plus D. If I am able to find the negation of this in the map, that means the summation of that will give me zero. That's it. Now let me submit and see if it's still giving a time limit exceeded or this is the accepted solution. Uh, there is a spelling mistake as of now. So let me write the spelling properly and let us submit again. Okay, let's check. So it's still giving time limit exceeded. Okay, now how can we optimize this further? So the way to optimize this is, see, instead of running three for loops, instead of doing it in O of n cube, we can uh, do it in O of n square. And how can we do that? So I will store the pairs of the first two arrays. I will store the sum of the first two arrays. For example, minus five and minus one is going to be minus six. So I will store minus six in a map. Okay, that is occurring. Now I will run over the next two arrays and five plus one is going to give me six. So I'm finding a six now. I already have a minus six. Six minus six is going to give me zero. That means I have found a tuple. So the uh, advantage of this is I can just do it in two for loops and the time complexity is going to be O of n square. Okay, that's it. So let's see a very quickly uh, dry run of this so that we are completely clear and then we'll code it and optimize it. So I'm going to take the first two arrays, right? And I'm going to find all such pairs. First pair is one and two. One and two is three. So three is occurring once. Next pair is one and minus three. So one and minus three is summing to give minus two. Minus two is occurring once. Next I have one and minus one. That is zero. Zero is occurring once. Next I have four plus two. Four plus two is six. Six is occurring once. Next I have four minus three. That is one. One is occurring once. Next I have four minus one, which is three right next i have 4 minus 1 which is 3 so i have 3 3 is already occurring so i will increase the count so 3 is occurring two times next i have minus 5 and 2 which is minus 3 so minus 3 is occurring once next i have minus 5 and minus 3 which is minus 8 so minus 8 is occurring once next i have minus 1 and uh, minus 5 so that is minus 6 so i have minus 6 minus 6 is also occurring once so this is my entire map that i have made now using this map i have all the possible uh, pairs that are possible right and now i will see if i can find a corresponding pair in these two arrays that are going to give me a sum of zero so let's take example so first pair in this is five minus two which is three so i have a three now i am looking for a minus three and from the map i can see i have a minus three minus 5 and 2 is going to give me minus 3 so from the first two arrays i have minus 3 from the last two arrays i have 3 so and that is occurring once so i will take a answer okay i will take a answer variable and i know that i have found one answer so i will increase my answer and i will say that i have found one pair so now let's go to the next example 5 plus 1 is 6 so i'm looking for a minus 6 i have found a minus 6 right minus 5 and minus 1 from the first two arrays is going to give me minus 6 i found that from the map and i have 5 plus 1 6 from the next two arrays so 6 minus 6 is going to give me 0 that means what that means i have found one more such uh, tuple now let's go to the next example 5 minus 3 5 minus 3 is 2 I am looking for a minus 2 and I have a minus 2 from the first two arrays 1 and minus 3 is giving me a minus 2 from the next two arrays 5 minus 3 is giving me 2 so I know that I have one more such pair right so I will change my answer answer becomes 3 now let's look at the next pair 0 minus 2 is minus 2 I am looking for a 2 there is no 2 in the map so I can just go forward next is 0 plus 1 which is 1 I am looking for a minus 1 there is no minus 1 in the map I can go forward next 0 minus 3 is minus 3 I am looking for 3 I have found two threes right so for example take this 1 plus 2 is also giving me 3 okay and I also have 4 minus 1 is also giving me 3 so i have two threes from the map i can see that i have two threes right 
and from the uh, next two arrays i have a minus 3 that means i can increment my answer by 2 because i have found two such tuples okay so i have found two such tuples that's why it's important to store count in the map so now let me increase my answer by 2 so i have uh, the answer 5 now okay so what we did so basically we uh, found that there are five pairs as of now so first we took these two pairs next 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 we took these two pairs okay now the remaining pairs left are minus one minus two is equal to minus three again i am looking for three i have two threes right so again my answer will increment by two and my answer will become equal to seven next i am looking for minus one plus one i am looking for zero I have a 0 right I have a 0 1 minus 1 is giving me 0 and here also I have 1 and minus 1 so all the 4 will sum up to give me 0 so I have one more pair so the answer will become equal to uh, 8 now okay now let's see the last pair minus 1 and minus 3 is minus 4 I am looking for a 4 there is no 4 so that's it the answer will remain 8 now let's code this solution quickly so it's uh, so we'll just modify this code so I'll just bring this line above so that's it and I will remove this line here now in the map I will save a plus b instead of just a okay that's it now I will run these two for loops and I will just look for c plus d that's it now let's sum it and see if it's getting accepted so this is the code and it will be o of n square it's getting accepted thank you